All right guys, today I'm gonna share with you guys something I'm really excited about. Um, that has been going on for a little bit. Um, well, two episodes, but <laughs> Basically, my mom and I decided to start a podcast a while ago, and we are just now starting to upload episodes and record, um, and it's really exciting, really fun, and I wanted to share with you guys kind of um, a little bit of what that is, um, so yeah. Basically, what the podcast is, is a podcast for mothers and daughters by a mother and daughter. It's to help moms and daughters um, kind of understand one another and understand both sides to a story. Um, and it's a safe space for daughters to um, reach out to for questions that they have that they're too uncomfortable or scared to ask their mom. And it's also a place where moms can reach out and ask questions that they're too scared or uncomfortable to ask their daughters as well. Um, my hope is that not only will it be a good place and a thing that will help build better relationships with mothers and daughters and my mom and I's relationship, but I also hope that it gives a place of kind of comfort and a place for those that don't have a mother figure in their life to ask those things to, um, which will hopefully, it, it, you know, it, it'd be beneficial for those people and they get to have that kind of role in a sense. Um, my mom and I have been having fun recording episodes and um, things like that. So, yeah, I wanted to share it with you guys, um, tell you guys about it, and I also am going to put an episode on here as well, our latest episode, episode two of our podcast, talking about our teenage years and kind of the parallels between my mom as a teenager and me as a teenager and what we do for fun and things like that. And it got to, it helped me get to know my mom a little bit more and kind of understand what she was like when she was my age, um, which was really fun and nice. And we played a fun game on there and um, talked about kind of like the timeline of our teenage years, answered a few questions about, you know, what we do as teenagers and we ended it off by sharing our favorites including celebrity crushes as teenagers so i hope you guys enjoy listening to this episode um i'm really excited about it we have a youtube channel and then we also have our podcast on spotify and amazon music I'm still working on getting on Apple Music, and it's also on some other sites as well. It's called Daughter Knows Best, and I'm going to put it up for you guys now. So, I hope you guys enjoy, and um, I'll see you guys for next week's video, which is going to be like a real video. I'm Jen. I'm Lily. And we're here to help build better relationships between mothers and daughters by asking and answering the questions that moms are uncomfortable to ask their daughters. And daughters are too uncomfortable to ask their moms. This is Daughter Knows Best. Today's episode, for our second episode, we decided um, to do something fun. My cousin told me that we should do this, and we decided it was a good idea. But we decided, why don't we compare our teenage years to one another? So, yeah. So, for some reference, my teenage years were the... 90s which is the best decade ever mine were the the 20s the 2020s yes quite literally exactly 2020 till till now so 
All right. When we say teenage years, we also say mean like ages 13 to like 19. Because I would, I would say 13 is a teenage year. Yeah, that's when the teenage angst starts. Yeah. So. Okay. So I wanted to start it off by giving a little timeline of things that have happened in the news. Um, big things that happened in America or around the world during years as a teenager. All right. So you can go first <coughs> because you were a teenager before I was. Yeah. So when I think about the big events during my teenage years, I think one of the first ones that comes to mind was Princess Diana and the car crash. Um, I was always very interested in Princess Diana and all things royal. Um, and I distinctly remember that we were on a family vacation. We were at Virginia Beach. We had a hotel that was on the ocean. Like literally we could walk out the door and our feet would be in the sand. And we had the TV on and the news came across that there was this chase and this crash. And I was glued to the TV. I forgot about the beach, forgot about the ocean. I sat in that room and I watched that news coverage. Did you cry? I don't know. I don't remember crying. I know it took some time for them to come out and say that she actually had died. And it was really sad. But I don't, I don't recall that I actually cried over it. I think I was just more in shock. I think everybody was in shock that that had actually happened. But so whereas I had Princess Diana, you had something similar during these years for you. Yeah. What was that? Queen Elizabeth passing. Yeah. How did that feel for you? I mean, I don't know. I live in America, so I mean, I mean, it was strange because she was, you know, she's been alive forever, so at least it feels like it. So it was just kind of weird to experience a monarch passing. So I know that you watched The Crown. Yes. Did you watch that before or after she passed? Uh, I started watching it way before she had passed. And then the new like the final seasons just came out recently but yeah I think when I first started watching the crown um the queen's the history of her being a young girl and how everything kind of transpired again it was pretty intriguing for me yeah I enjoyed that show it was really nice to kind of see the other side of it and then when Diana started being talked about on the show that was really interesting and everything so yeah yeah Yeah. So I would say for me, Diana was probably number one. Um, You know, the next thing that gets a lot of um, talk during the 90s was OJ Simpson and that darn white Bronco. Um, You know, everybody kind of chose a side. Again, we were all glued to the TV watching this white Bronco being followed by, you know, 20 cop cars down some California highway and What was going to happen? Did he do it? Didn't he do it? Why was he running? Um, And I remember, I distinctly again remember sitting in my history class watching the trial um, when, you know, they held the glove up. up. If it doesn't fit, you must have quit. That got a whole lot of conversation going in our in our history class. And then when the verdict was read, we were watching it. And, um, you know, everybody had their opinions. And I don't think anybody ever got closure. No. And to go with that, O.J. Simpson recently passing away. And he had his kids sign an NDA, which if you don't know an NDA is, it's like a legal document saying that you can't speak about someone or something um, without, do you get like sued? I would assume. Yeah. Or? Yeah. So like yeah. if you don't have express permission to talk about whatever's within that NDA, then they can sue you for everything. So like a lot of celebrities have people that work for them, sign them or other things like that. But I think it's a little suspicious that on his deathbed, you know, having all of his kids around makes them sign an NDA makes you think that he might've, you know, had, given them some information 
something he didn't want to get out. Yeah. Like that's, that's suspicious. So yeah, I think he should have made a video on his deathbed giving, you know, the truth. We'll never know. We'll never know, but we can assume based off the NDA. We'll never know. Anything else? Um, I mean, I think, are you familiar with Rodney King? Sure. Just talk about it. So he was, um, he was a black guy that was in California. Mm -hmm. I think it was California. And he was pulled over by the police and he took a heck of a beating, um, significant beating. And it was videotaped. Mm. And so, you know, this was the age before cell phones. So like the video wasn't the best, but it definitely showed that there was some, um, something didn't seem quite right. Yeah. Um, definitely Pope. I am pro police, Mm -hmm. um, pro military, pro all of it. Um, but it doesn't mean you can't have some bad eggs in there. Yeah. So that was a very divisive time throughout the entire United States. Yeah. Um, it was races against one another, people against the police, very similar to kind of what we experience now. Yeah. Um, when we think about the different, um, police events that have occurred. Um, so again, you know, I don't know that I ever really took a side on it. I do feel what happened to Rodney King was absolutely atrocious. Mm -hmm. Um, but what happened after that verdict came back and the riots and the fires and the, the bloodshed that happened after that didn't prove any points. Yeah. Um, but again, that was on a national stage that brought attention to things. So, um, I mean, I know, you know, during the 2020s, yep. you've seen many videos and conversations had around police brutality and and that kind of stuff so I think that's definitely something that we have in common as well yeah the riots that took place especially after George Floyd and all that stuff so yeah yeah. but so I have a little timeline okay of my teen years all right so we start off in 2020 obviously COVID quarantine you know miserable thing Then we have Trump versus Biden, which I think is probably one of the first biggest divides politically. It has to have been one of the biggest political divides in a lot of U.S. history, if I'm being for real. Because, I mean, obviously, I haven't, like, presidentially, Mm -hmm. because, I mean, obviously, I've only lived through three elections. But, I mean, it was a huge deal. Obviously, people are quarantined on their phones they have nothing better to do than either watch the news or go on tiktok or instagram and they're going to be believing everything that is fed at them so trump versus biden big debate my first look at politics i mean it even had freaking like 13 year olds debating Mm -hmm. because me and my friends we would debate over it and we have no business doing that so that was a big deal obviously everybody was divided and even going into this election I feel like there's still quite a bit of division, but just not as much as there was in 2020. 2020 was the year of like just hate, I feel like. Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. No matter what, everybody was just hating one another. Um, 2021, COVID started to die down a little bit. I mean, it was still a big deal, but not as big of a deal. I don't really remember that many other things. There might have been other things, but one thing I have written down Tampa Bay beating the Chiefs in the Super Bowl (laughs) just because nobody beats the Chiefs I feel like so yeah Tampa Bay did it Super Bowl they lost yeah they had the goat right yes and it was their home field too so Mm -hmm. first team to do that it happens um 2022 summer 2022 one of the biggest summers with film wise Stranger Things season four came out still got that song stuck in my head um top gun maverick and elvis came out glenn powell austin butler big deals um so that was pretty pretty big deal because that summer those movies those were top notch um and then 2022 queen elizabeth passed away and trisha paytas had a baby do you know why that's so significant mom i do not okay well trisha paytas is a known youtuber she 
has done mukbangs. She sings sometimes on videos. That was old videos. Um, and she's been on My Strange Addiction for self-tanning. She was on AGT one time, America's Got Talent, for singing. Um, she's a big, well-known name. So she announced that she was pregnant. And the last few months of her pregnancy, people started to notice that the queen was, her health was declining a bit. So people started being like, oh my gosh, what if when the queen dies, she has her baby? Like, what if the queen is reincarnated as her daughter? So, so weird. Everybody started saying that. Well, when they announced that Queen Elizabeth had passed away, guess who announced that they had their baby? Trisha Paytas. So everybody thinks that her daughter is reincarnated as the queen. I'm going to say not everybody thinks A that. lot of people. Okay. A lot of people that were in this, because it started out as like a joke, and then all of a sudden, the queen passes away, and the baby's born. So. Well, that is biology, so. But that was a big, that was, that was a big thing. Well, I guess it was for you. It was a big thing on TikTok, big thing on YouTube. It, it Everybody was, you know. It was entertaining, but um, there's that. So that that was a big deal, Mom. All right. Um, 2023, DeMar Hamlin, the football game against the Bengals and Bills, where he went to cardiac arrest. He did. And on the field, um, that was scary. Big deal. Um, so there's that. The Ocean Gate Titan submarine, the submarine that was to go oh, yeah. and look at the Titanic. Yeah. Multiple billionaires on board. It ended up imploding due to the pressure, and how sad that was. That yeah, it was. Everybody thought they just went missing, but yeah. they found other things. So that was a scary thing. Twenty twenty three, the Trump prison scandal, him getting arrested, all of that. You know. Yeah. And here not, we are again. Yeah, it's not every day a former president gets arrested and has to go through many trials. So, I mean, that's an interesting thing happening in history. Um, yeah. And then 2024, King Charles and um, Prince William's wife, Catherine, um, both diagnosed with cancer. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's a big deal because, again, the royal family um, having all of that. So, yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be something to see how that plays out yeah. for, for both of them. Yeah. I mean, we both hope them the best and that they get cured and yeah it's really interesting especially because king charles is the king but catherine is married to the heir to the throne right so um that's a big deal yeah see how that plays out and then oj simpson obviously passed away as we had said and had his kids sign it nda and then also another thing that the teens here will understand is jojo siwa she's now a bad girl and that's all I have to say on that. All right. With the new song, she went a whole different direction. But yeah. she's apparently a bad girl now. So Well, some artists do that. You know, when I was growing up, Taylor Swift was a country singer. Yeah. Now she's not. Now she's not, no. So. Yeah, but JoJo Seed was on a different level. <laughs> anyway, okay. So now we have different questions and things that we can kind of um collaborate on and give our how it's different now compared to how it was in the 90s yeah so where should we start well, let's start off with like what what our first cars were so what was your first car my first car was a chevy prism it was a little four-door sedan. Um, it was used, but I loved it. It was like a champagne, pinkish, goldish color. Um, and when we got it, the best part was at the center console, mm -hmm. the guy had full of change and just left it in there. Oh. So I got to, like, wrap up a whole bunch of change and take it to the bank and get some cash from my car. Do you know how much it was worth? I have no idea at this oh. point. I don't remember. Um, I love that car. It yeah. was great. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? What do you What do you got? 
I got a Subaru Legacy, and it is a pretty blue color. I love it. We call it Sally because it looks like the car from the Cars movie. It does, yes. Love it to pieces. That's that's the one thing I wanted. I wanted a blue car. That's why we got it. Yep. Didn't care what else. Just just wanted that. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Um. Hmm. Where should we start next? Well, so like, what did you do when you were bored, like pre-license? Uh, so we're still talking teenage years, right? Yes. So, um, I mean, we didn't have cell phones. Yes. We barely had computers. Barely. <laughs> like, if anything, we could play, like, stupid games. Yes. I'm talking, like, the... Minesweeper? Minesweeper and then the... Solitaire? Yeah, but, like, the one where you're on the trail. And oh, the Oregon Trail? Yeah, the Oregon Trail. The Oregon Trail. Yeah, you're hoping you don't die of dysentery somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, really, computers weren't that cool um i mean we could watch tv but it wasn't like the tv now we got like six channels yeah um so really for me like it was keeping myself entertained um we had a big pond so we would fish we would go out in the woods goof around uh i play basketball with myself i play volleyball with myself um you know there was just or you know it was not uncommon for, you know, parents to drop kids off at somebody's house and we would just spend all the time we could. What about you? Oh, well, obviously there's phones, there's technology. So before my license, I would just, I don't know. I would just watch YouTube or TV or I build Lego set. Yeah. Or you would, have friends would come over and have I mean I have a neighbor down the road so we would just go on walks together or bike rides so but also before I had my license there was also during COVID too so that experience was a little different because I mean there wasn't people weren't really able to hang out or do anything so right I would just really have to stay in the house and just do school work and watch tv or something else to keep me entertained there wasn't really that much to yeah I just keep thinking like if COVID had happened during my high school years like there would have been no alternatives yeah because there would have been no online education yeah luckily you know I was able to FaceTime friends and everything the technology that we had during it is great yeah we probably would have gotten packets workbooks (laughs) probably that's what well because that's what we used to do for like snow days days, yeah 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 no, been interesting. What was your what was your regular like sleepover with friends like? So pre-license, I mean they were pretty, you know, just whatever. Watch yeah. a movie, hang out. Um I think we did like Ouija board stuff. Oh, okay. Um we did like light as a feather. Have you ever done that? Uh no, like, but I've seen it on like a bunch of yeah. shows. I we did that kind of goofy stuff. Yeah. Um post license. Um, yeah, we had fun. So there was a group of us, a group of girls, and we would go over to our friend's house and her house was, um, half underground. Oh yeah. Yeah. So like the roof was grass. Yeah. And it was all just a wall of windows and we would go there and we would watch the dumbest B horror flicks ever. So like when I say B movies, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like, no. They're not like the Hollywood movies. Oh. They're like the somebody got like a a camcorder for Christmas and they're recording a movie. Like oh, the okay. worst acting, worst plot, everything. But they can still be scary, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. So we would sit in her house with these windows that looked out upon nothing and scare the crap out of ourselves watching these stupid B movies. Then we would get in the car. And we, there were a couple of places around us that had these old superstitions. Uh huh. Um, and we would try to elicit ghost responses. Oh my God. Who are you? We would try to get this, like, there was one, like, if you said something or you turned, I don't know. I don't remember what all we had to do, but oh my like, gosh. you would hope that, like, a motorcycle light would come at you. Um, we spent a lot of time in some cemeteries hanging out. Like, <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, we did some like, I mean, that was, that was our thing. (laughs) What the heck? I don't even know you right now. Yeah. That was, that was our. Cemeteries? Yeah. Where people are buried and just want to rest. You guys hung out there. Well, I mean, we weren't distasteful. You were just trying to find ghosts. Yeah. Just okay. seeing who was there. Trying to think about what their lives would have been like. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What about you? What do you, what do you guys do when you're hanging out? When we, so pre-license, find whatever we could do in the house. Making slime, playing with chalk, getting you to take us to Walmart. Mm-hmm. Had an inflatable boat in one time. We blew it up and there was like, our yard was flooding. So we put it out there. Didn't work. It was also in January. So it was really cold. Um, Now with our license, we go play pickleball or tennis or we just stay at a person's house. We argue on if we're going to watch a scary movie or not because I don't like scary movies. Um, I tried watching Scream. Didn't last long. I hate it. (laughs) It was, and it, it, the thing that was sad is that I wanted to like scream, but it was like, it was, like, the acting wasn't bad or anything, but like, it was just some of it. It's like, it's so fake. Like you can tell it's so fake, but then it's like, it was so scary. So I could not watch it anymore. So we had a, I screamed, like I was scared. I woke my friend's mom up. It, it was, yeah. Um, so there's that we go to McDonald's in the middle of the night that's always fun. Yeah. Um, a few weeks ago, I went to one friend's house because our grade was doing the junior tag. And we had planned on, it started at midnight. We had planned on going out and finding our first target at midnight. So we, we went, her dad, my friend's dad drove us. We ended up blocking the road like five times. Um, ended up blocking them from their cul-de-sac. And we ended up finally leaving because there was a neighbor outside looking around with a flashlight and we drove by a sheriff's car. So we think that they called him on us, uh, but we didn't get caught. So it's, it's cool. Did you get your target? No, no, because it was a whole thing. No, we did not end up getting our target. We had a really solid plan and then he found out about it. So it didn't work, but it was fun. Yeah. And then we drove around all day. Yeah, it's looking for people. So we we find things to do. But most of the time, even with our license, we just chill out of house and don't really do much. We have fun. We play Roblox. Yeah. So video games. Video games, yeah. But yeah, there's that. So not nearly as cool as us in the nineties. No, I'm not gonna go summon some ghost somewhere. Like Obviously not, because you're scared. No, it's terrifying. Like, that is scary. Like, we tried watching, oh, what is it called? It's a movie on Netflix. And I was scared. They were like, it's not that bad. It's not that bad at all. No, it was really scary. And I didn't, I slept, I started to pretend to sleep so that they would turn it off. Because I couldn't do it anymore. Like, it was scary. And there's, like, three parts. And they're like, maybe we can start watch. maybe we can watch all the, the movies. No. You guys should watch Final Destination. Probably not. What is that? You just need to watch it. There's like three of them, I think. Is it like a horror movie or is it like... It's not like a jump scare, I wouldn't say. See, I'd rather have jump scare. I'm fine with like a jump scare. Like, I don't care about jump scare. I don't like like gore. Is there gore? There's not really gore. I would say Final Destination is more like it freaks you out like mentally. Okay, so I don't like that either (laughs) don't like that either i only like i'm fine with a jump scare a good jump scare is fine i don't like the mm -mm. no okay well then maybe not maybe you should try a b movie maybe there is one there is it's a manatee movie and it's definitely one of a b movie yeah a scary manatee it's i don't know what it's called but like these manatees just they're, they become like they eat people and stuff and this I don't think I'd want to watch that because I like manatees manatees don't actually eat people I know that's why I don't think I want to watch that because then I'd be afraid they would eat me the next time I was in the water they only eat like lettuce and <laughs> right. seaweed right they don't right but if I watched a scary movie about manatees when are you going to encounter a manatee 
We did when we were in Florida. But you didn't watch the movie before that. No, that's what I'm saying. I don't want to watch the movie because the next time I encounter a manatee. Well, we encountered a shark the same day, so. I didn't see the shark. But we knew it was there. And there was an alligator in there, too, somewhere, so. Because that kid was feeding it. But um, Anyway, okay. <sighs> Whatever. Um, Let's go with how is school different than it is today? Should I talk about how school is today? Yeah. You okay. Go first this time. Today, I don't. I mean, school is just how I've always known it. I mean, we have our lockers. A lot of it is based on computers. Now we have like CCP, so the um, college course um, courses that you can do through while you're in high school, which is really nice. Um, all online. We have some teachers that teach it as well. Um. I don't know. It's all based on computers, obviously. Yeah. We don't have a library. So for us, obviously not based on computers. I think at some point we had like a computer lab. We had all these Apple computers, all like the cool color Apple computers when they first came out. Yeah. Um, But again, not a ton we could really do on it. Um, Even if we wanted to like do research we were going to the library because the extent of what you could research on the computer at that time was still very much whatever they could upload yeah we didn't have like the world wide web kind of stuff going on so if there was an encyclopedia online it was probably outdated as much as what was in the library um meanwhile for me we don't even have a library right we just have something called a media center that has like TVs and seating space. And there, I mean, there's a tiny little library, but it's more so for the middle school than it is the high school. So I think for us, school was a time to reconnect because we didn't have that 24 seven connection. Yeah. Um, Half of our school was in a different um, area code. So when we're talking old landline phones, if I wanted to call my friend that lived down the road, that her area code was different, I would have to pay. Mm -hmm. Um, long distance charges. Yeah. And I could literally like jog to her house. Mm -hmm. Um, So we didn't even necessarily have the ability to just, you know, call people when we wanted, especially because, you know, each house only had one landline and everybody had to share it. Um, So school was a chance to reconnect and see friends that, you know, you haven't talked to in the last 24 hours. Um, But I think the biggest difference for us was when we left school, we could leave school. We yeah. could leave those people. Um, now you don't have that opportunity, mm-hmm. right? If if somebody's being bullied at school, yeah. they can't leave that behind at the end of the day when they get on the bus because of that 24-7 availability yeah. electronically. That bullying can continue regardless. So, again, looking back, the 90s were way better. Yeah. I would say, though, I agree that school is a place to reconnect because even though I have... 24 7 um contact with my friends there is still times where it's like at school like away from school it doesn't mean that I do talk to them but at school like we talk about things more so than we do over the phone so I mean we all just talk about random stuff at school yeah I think probably for us, we, we don't have that distraction of the telephones either. Yeah. Right. So when we were in class, we would legit pass notes. Yeah. Um, or we'd have like hand signals that we could communicate with. Hand signals. Yeah. Hand signals. Um, so I don't know. That, for me, like that's just high school was fun. Yeah. I think our high school is fun. I mean, I don't know anything different. Right, and we didn't know anything different either, so that was just, it is what it is. I don't know. I'd say it's nice to, because even there's people that, like, I don't have any contact to that I still, like, I I talk to them at school, and, I mean, I have some friendships that are more just a school-based friendship that I wouldn't talk to them in my free time. Yeah. Not because I don't like them, it's just we aren't the same kind of crowd. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, Mom, we're going to play a game. Oh, we're going to play a game. Okay. We're going to play a game. So, I have the game right here. So, basically, for people listening, 
is I wanted to do something fun, do every episode just a little fun game in the middle of an episode to kind of cleanse the palate depending on what we're talking about. There's some hard topics that we'll probably be talking about and you just, you got to cleanse the palate sometimes, have a little bit of fun. So why don't we just start it in this episode because I forgot to last episode. So this game, um, mom, I will tell you different fashion choices in the 90s. Okay. And you will blindly rate them one through ten. What? The pen. I need to know what numbers I'm writing down. Well, I was going to write them down for you. Oh, but then I won't know what number's left. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I got okay. an old lady mind here. <laughs> okay, okay. So I'll tell you different fashion choices in the 90s, and you will blindly rate them one through ten. But you can't change an answer, and you can't you reuse a number. Okay. Um, you also don't get to know what the next option is. Okay. Four. All right. Wait, is 10 the best or one the best? One's the best, 10's the worst. Okay. Okay. Okay.